Hi everybody, welcome if you're new. My name is Amanda. This is my journey going from morbidly obese to healthy following a carnivore diet. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. If you have questions, just put them in the comments. If I don't get to them there, then I'll pull them into the next week's Q&A. Recently, I did my doctor's update with my just plain labs, but today we're gonna go over my cardiology lab. It is a very specified test. It's an NMR test that the cardiologist ordered for me. And I've been waiting to hear back from him and he did respond back to me, but I also did quite a bit of research myself so I could digest these numbers even better. So I'll just kind of go over each portion of it, tell you my numbers, and then kind of tell you what I discovered and found about it. Keep in mind that this is my baseline. I've never had this test done before, so I don't really have any comparisons. He did suggest that I have this done in the next five to six months again, and that way this is the baseline, and then we can see how my profile has changed as time progresses. The standard lipid panel, what it does is it counts how many passengers are in a taxi. If the taxi is the LDL particle itself and the cholesterol is a passenger, the lipid panel just counts how many passengers there are in the taxi, not how many taxis. But we all know if you can fit 50 people in one taxi and not a lot of taxis on the road, it doesn't create a lot of congestion. But if there is a crap ton of taxis, then that's more of a problem if there's not so many. So it's, that's why I said it's not very accurate. It's just a kind of poorly gross estimate of a lipid panel. The LDL-C, which is a, again, that standard lipid panel that most PCPs do. My LDL-P number, which is how many LDL particles I actually have in my blood. I have 2,152. It's supposed to be less than 1,138 nanomoles per liter. I did a little research trying to figure out why mine's high. I imagine honestly six months ago, and this is just speculation, that it was probably even higher considering my actual cholesterol levels have come down overall. So it turns out the LDL particle doesn't just carry cholesterol, which was just my gross assumption. It actually carries cholesterol, triglycerides, antioxidants, and fat soluble vitamins. What happens when I have high cholesterol and high triglycerides, they're both fighting to get onto that LDL particle, so what my body makes more. And we can see in my blood work from just four or five months ago, my triglycerides were 354, I believe exactly, and my cholesterol was 250, so both were elevated. So no wonder my body had to produce more LDL taxis, because if you have a lot of both, then well, you wanna have a lot of carriers out there. Now, my triglycerides have come down more than half. They're about 150 now. So we'll just have to wait and see as time progresses what happens with this number. My assumption is it's coming down, but again, this is just a baseline that I have now to compare things to. The panel goes a little bit further into it and tells me how many small LDL particles I have. Mine was at 325. They want you less than 142 nanomoles per liter. And I did some research of what actually causes more small ones. And it turns out, <laughs> elevated carb intake. Imagine that. But something I found really fascinating is fructose has more of an impact on it than glucose. So eating fruits will increase your small LDL particles more than regular just like carbs. I had been eating a lot of fruit towards, you know, four or five months ago. Other things that impact it are the standard American diet, which we all know is high carb anyways, insulin resistance and diabetes. I am no longer type two diabetic, but I still have insulin resistance. That is gonna take however many months it's gonna take to resolve and get better. I have been insulin resistant probably 20 years of my 33 years on this planet. I'm not expecting that it's gonna go away in just a few months. It is getting better, but I will have another insulin test done probably in three or four months to have a comparison, because right now I just have my base insulin test I had done, I think a month ago. The LDL medium, I was 530. They want it less than 215 nanomoles per liter. Same thing, 
having too many carbs, fructose, standard American diet, diabetes, and things like that make those go up. We'll just wait and see. My large HDL particles are 8,504. They want it greater than 6,729 nanomoles per liter. This is good. This shows a decreased risk of cardiac events. And ironically, to have more large HDL particles, eating saturated fat increases it. It also turns out there is type of patterning that happens with the LDL particles. I have pattern A. This is good, I guess. It has a lot to do with genetics too. This means I have no increased risk for atherosclerosis, which is good. What is atherosclerosis? Oh. <laughs> atherosclerosis, for those who didn't know, is hardening or plaque buildup in the arteries. It's bad. All right, my LDL peak size was 218.9, and they want it more than 222. This is really interesting. Ketogenic diet can increase your LDL peak size, and they want it the bigger, the better. Ironically, a low fat diet can increase the expression of the pattern B, what we just talked about, has an increased risk of cardiovascular events. Apolipoprotein B, what a mouthful. We'll call it ApoB for short. Mine is 114. They want it less than 90 milligrams per deciliter. This is protein on the LDL particle that helps carry the VLDL, LDL. For those who don't know, VLDL is just very low density lipid and LDL is low density lipid. I have found different ranges. I found some groups are calling for less than 130, some less than 100. So I'm kind of in that grace range. This is just based on Quest Diagnostics preference for the blood panel, not my physicians, because I will actually go back after I have the second version of this done later and we'll actually see in person and talk about this. And the last one is my lipoprotein A. It is 15. It should be less than 75 nanomoles per liter. This is excellent because increased lipo A increases the risk of heart disease and stroke, and mine is very low, which is great. Lipoprotein A is what carries cholesterol from the cells to the arteries. It's what builds the plaque up in our arteries. So the fact I have very little is really good. And I found some other stuff digging deep into my research. Reasons for increased LDL particles. Increased cholesterol, increased triglycerides. We kind of talked about this. If you have a lot of passengers, well, your body has to make more taxis. So that'll go up. But things like leaky gut. I can't say I have this or don't have this, but I just found it really interesting. When the barrier fails in the intestines, it leads to endotoxins like lipopolysaccharides, which are called LPS, to enter the blood. It induces the immune response. And what happens is there's binding proteins with the LDL particles, and they're shown to decrease the toxicness of the LPS by binding and removing it. So if you have leaky gut, your body's gonna make more LDL, has more access to these binding proteins on the LDL because you're experiencing leaky gut, which is an autoimmune response. So I have a lot of VLDL, which are the small LDL particles we saw, I'm a, like a thousand or two above what they want. Well, it turns out VLDL tends to carry mostly triglycerides. Three months ago, my triglycerides were 350. Reason one, explaining why I have so much VLDL. But then I started thinking, well, it, my triglycerides have come down. They're still slightly up. Why have I not seen a decrease in the number more? So I looked up the mechanism. Just bear with me. VLDL carries triglycerides. Once there's more cholesterol than triglycerides on a VLDL, it turns into LDL. So here's how the mechanism goes. You start off with a VLDL particle it bumps into an HDL particle. What happens is the HDL donates a protein to the VLDL. The VLDL with this pro borrowed protein circulates through the blood and there's another protein it picks up that's just floating in our blood plasma, picks that up. So now this VLDL has two proteins attached to it now. 
when it runs into, through the circulation, it'll run into something called a lipoprotein lipase in the capillary beds. Things like in our liver, in our pancreas, we have these capillary beds. So when it gets there, what happens is this lipoprotein lipase, LPL, will remove the triglycerides from this VLDL molecule. The VLDL then gives back that protein it borrowed from the HDL. The HDL takes its protein back, takes the rest of the triglycerides and the phospholipids. So now this VLDL has that one protein it picked up from just the plasma at this point. Once all of it's gone through all this and it has that just one plasma protein, it turns into a intermittent density lipoprotein. <laughs> So it's an IDL at this point. Once this happens, half of the IDLs will be endocytosed by the liver. So it goes in the liver, the liver breaks it down. The other half, with a float around till they gather more cholesterol, they turn back into LDL. So it's not like this instantaneous change from one to the next. Our blood work with lipids don't just change like that. Our body recycles, reuses, or just reappropriates them. If that was confusing for you, watch it again, or not. if not, just ignore it, it's fine. I just, you know, I have a background in physiology, so I find biochem very interesting. If you don't, that's okay. To sum everything up, here's what the cardiologist had to say. We can see that there is a trend of your triglycerides slowly coming down. Remember, your goal is to get your triglyceride slash HDL ratio closer to 1.2 to 1.4. The other information on this blood work shows that your LPA, which is normal, is good news. This also is associated with bad cardiovascular events if it is elevated, which mine is not. Another important number is the apoprotein B, which is up just slightly. I think this blood work provides a good baseline and is hopefully encouraging to show you your basic cholesterol profile to continue to improve. This is a test that I can repeat in about five to six months to see what kind of impact I'm having on my lipids. And his last comment is, remember that triglycerides are significantly impacted by consumption of carbohydrates as well as seed oils. Prepared foods tend to drive up triglycerides as well as things like lunch meat sausages rather than pure meat that is prepared in butter or ghee. Hashtag from the cardiologist. As always, thank you guys so much for your encouragement and support and really specifically your encouragement and support to everybody else. I truly appreciate it and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. We are doing ribs today. We're doing more beef ribs. Yum, more yum. beef ribs. High tra... This NMR, this NM... Meaning that the passengers are large and buoyant. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> I was thinking leaky gut was farting, but I guess that would be leaky butt. So I will thank you. Okay, a giant poop the size of an ostrich egg you're trying to squeeze out. You're a poop the size of an ostrich egg. <laughs> Maybe my head <laughs> is. <laughs> Look at that tail. Look at that tail. <laughs>